Hello there guys, Billabo10000 here bringing you another episode of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. This is episode 3, and in this episode we're going to continue on our adventure in this murderous killing game. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel a paralyzing fear, slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. Chapter 1. To Survive. Daily Life. Here we go, guys. We're about to face our first big chapter. But for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to pierce it was her sharp words. So, what are you going to do now? Hey. Just stand around glaring at each other? Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. Thanks, Kyoko. You really sorted this out there. It helped pull us all back to reality. <laughs> right. She's right. Listen to me. Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. <laughs> to forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed. You hear me? Please, someone hit me. I can't forgive myself. Someone hit me. Punish me! Huh? Jesus. If you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. However... Perhaps, but what is the mission exactly? Stupid... Idiot. To look for a way out. Duh. What the... And we totally need to find out whoever was controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of him. But... 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 but before we do all of that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations, Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. All right. Fine. So then... then let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. Here we go. Let's take a look at the rules. We've got some very interesting ones. Makoto Noegi, my handbook, beautiful. Yeah, first thing I appeared was my name, Monokuma did say that. And then the main menu, regulations. An itemized list appeared on the screen. In other words, the rules being opposed to us all. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving the campus is an unacceptable use of time. Nighttime is from 10pm to 7am. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than a dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. And anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. That means glass trial, which will be explained in another episode. And additional things will be added as necessary. So, yeah, bit dizzy. Face up from the screen, looking around, stormy expression on everyone's faces. This is bullshit. What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me. <laughs> well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks one of the rules. But if he got punished, like what we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn waiting for him. <laughs> Yo. I, ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it. Even if it kills him. And... So what? What? I've made a ton of promises that I still have to keep. That's what. Piece of shit! So I can't afford to die in here! <sighs> None of that made much sense to me. But you are saying you will follow the regulations. Is that it? That's true. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, um, I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes black and will graduate unless they are discovered. You're talking about the second half, right? Where it says unless they are discovered? I was wondering about that myself. Hm. It's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But, but why? 
Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worry about following the rules if they've been explained to us. Such ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. D -d don't jab at me. Give me a break. <laughs> More like full on stab. Mm. Well, for now, let's forget all that silly junk about murders and whatever. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. True. We need to find out where exactly we are. Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions we need to answer. Damn straight! Okay then, let's all start looking around. Hm. I'll be going alone. What? What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Hm. Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. That would never... What? Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all sized up with fear when the graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? Uh, um... But... Hm. So I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Just hold on. Hold on. Like hell, I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever you want. What? Out of my way, Plankton. What? What the fuck's that supposed to mean? Such ignorance. One tiny bit of Plankton. Drifting across the sea, so minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. You're I'm gonna kick your ass! Stop it, we shouldn't fight! What? The fuck you just say? You some kind of goody-goody little bitch? You Who do you think you are, talking to me like that? You think you're my fucking dad or something? Uh, no, I wasn't... You fuck you! Bitch. Oh no. Oh! Oh, we got punched. Oh, punch me, flew back, and I'm pretty sure we get knocked out. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh Christ, that's not good, we're knocked out, we're basically knocked out, like I don't, I, where are we going to end up guys, what I saw was, a bedroom. Yes, my bedroom? Yeah. Huh? Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so... Where am I now? You now have access to the handbook menu. Okay, can I just skip this, please? I know how to use the handbook menu, I just do this. And then you get the map, you get presents, report card, regulations, and saving. Alright, let's take a look around the room. Uh, we've got a door over there. This would appear to be the bathroom. Oh, uh, it's not opening. I guess it's locked. Oh, well, I clicked off the screen there, that was awkward. It's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves? I guess. Oh, a key. This must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain, which means it must be mine, right? I'd better hang on to it for now. There's a piece of paper hanging on the wall which says, Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to be completely protect against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at night time. Also, the bathrooms in the girls' rooms include a lock of their own. Finally, we've prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit, and for the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map with the body's vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls. For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of those tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel, and let's enjoy ourselves. That's interesting. If all the girls' bathrooms are locked, why is my bathroom locked? I assume the boys' ones aren't locked, if that's the case. So that's very interesting. It looks like there's something in the drawer. It's a toolkit. Must be brand new, still in the shrink wrap. Don't really need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. 
Ah, can we go? <laughs> I want to leave. Looks like the store leads outside. It's locked. So some of the rooms have locks, huh? I think I'm starting to become... Uh, I don't know what that was. Sleeping anywhere over in the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and be punished accordingly. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get punished by Headmaster Monokuma. Yes, this is our dorm room. Yes, someone did carry you here. Yes. What's everyone else up to right now? Why don't we go find out? Let's leave like I was just trying to do. Yes. I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others. But there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Oh, that sounded like it hurt. Ah. Oh, Sayaka. I could tell by the voice, but oh, oh, wow, that shot. That shot. Oh, oh. my god. Sayaka? <laughs> Sorry. Are you okay? Oh, Sayaka. I I'm fine. I hope you're okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. My first friend, guys. <laughs> oh. Are you okay, Sayaka? Are you hurt? <laughs> you make it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good, then. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you? That's true. I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Makoto. Makoto. Oh, uh, I'm fine. Nothing wrong here. That's good. Oh, that's good. I was kind of worried. Thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Uh, um, Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Um, well, listen. if you really are feeling better, I was hoping you'd come to the dining hall. The dining hall? You see. After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we'd each found out. So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. That's good. Good. I'll go on ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. Oh, bye. Just gonna quickly look around, see if there's anyone else in the dorms. Great fucking Sayakin's picture there. That's just a like Sailor Moon. Uh, yep, you've got a bunch of, of dormitories, each with the people's names on them. You've just got a nice kind of... Square location, trash room, toilets. There is a laundry room somewhere, but I think it's somewhere else. Uh, a blocked off room. Uh, that's the laundry room. A bathhouse that's blocked off, and that's obviously the dining hall. It's like a hotel. Hello! Oh, Sayaka, hi. This must be the dormitory dining hall. Very nice for a dining hall. It looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, I guess that's not really important right now, with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much choice, I guess we should just wait here for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just wait here. Huh? You heard that? Like I said, I'm psychic. Oh. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Is it really just intuition? Or is she like the ultimate psychic? Oh, fuck a tutorial. Uh, yeah, talking to Sayaka. Okay, purple words. Oh, purple words. No, 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 no. I know what they are. I, I know what the purple words are. I genuinely don't care about those purple words. It is uh, a feature that I just found to be completely annoying in this game, and I'm glad they removed it from the second game. By the way, Makoto. Oh, uh, what is it? Um, well, it's just... I know this is kind of continuing a self-introduction thing. Okay, let's talk to you there. Continuing our self-introductions? We kind of got cut off before, but I have a question I wanted to ask you. She wanted to ask me something. Ooh. Ooh, let's hear this. Yep, skip to it. There we go. What did you want to ask me? Makoto, did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Or you may be in class two. Yeah, actually I was. I knew it! I went there too! I was in class four, though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Oh, even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was that she remembered me. We'd never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. 
Hey, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. <laughs> we went to the same school for three years. Of course I remember. Well, that's true, but there were lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm average at everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. Aww. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange? That's... <laughs> she started giggling. And that mysterious m smile made her happy. Okay. Smile was the nicest smile I'd ever seen. That's good. Anyway, I'm really glad uh, that I know somebody here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about all this. You're amazing, Makoto. No, I'm really not. I'm nothing at all compared to you ultimates in this goddamn sexual tension right now. <laughs> but you're the one that helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Okay. And to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. Huh? My assistant? Okay. <laughs> yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can. So let's get out of here together. When she says things like that, it, uh, it just gets me pumped up, basically wants to fuck her. Which is nice, but still, everyone is still late. Besides that, I don't even know what time it is right now. There must be a clock around here somewhere. There's a fucking clock right there, right in the background. Uh, seven o'clock at night? Uh, um... You were unconscious for a pretty long time. I see. Not being able to look out a window, I've lost those- Isn't that a window to the very right? With the trees outside. That is a fucking window. That is a fucking window. Hey, um... I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like you timed it, Tucker, for opening the dining hall doors. Hey! Ah, Makoto, Sayaka. So you two got here first, huh? How unfortunate. Too bad. I was sure I'd beat everyone here. <laughs> I guess that means I just don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that, everyone else came strolling in one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Oh, thank God it's voice acted. Oh, God, I look really depressed there. Just look at my face. I'm like, kind of, why am I here? I don't fucking know why I'm here. Also, no visible bruise from Mondo. And why am I sitting next to Mondo? That is also an awful question. Where's Kyoko as well? I've just noticed she's not in this. Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. Okay. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. All right. Hold on a sec. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're basically just saying it for me. What about, uh, what's her name? You know, the silver-haired girl. <gasps> oh, yeah, Kyoko. Hmm. What about her? She's not here. What? I took another look around. Yeah, she's not no to be seen. Um, I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? And everyone just shook their heads. Huh? Wait, so nobody's seen her? Why hasn't Kyoko shown up yet? Could it be because she was murdered? I'm not gonna say that again. Fuck the fuck the flashbacks. The flashbacks are not needed. Is it possible she was really? No, I'm just overthinking things. Darn it, Kyoko. You're going to be late like this on the first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't tell anyone she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. You're being a real jackass right now, you know that? But what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare that the first session of the Hope Speak Academy briefing meetings has begun. That's a very long name, I must admit. Um, Makoto, actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> you know. What's up? <laughs> I feel like I really have become your personal assistant. Don't you agree? Yeah, there's sexual tension there. <laughs> personal assistant means let's fuck. That's pretty, I, I, I'm saying it in the nicest way possible. That is basically what it means. Okay, so since you're in the dark about all this, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone's split up to investigate different parts of the building, but... You see... Byakuya and Take each went off on their own, and so did Kyoko. Let's talk to Byakuya first. I wanted to try and find some clue as to who's responsible for imprisoning us here. But unfortunately, I made no such discoveries. That's all from me. Really? That's it? 
If I'd uncovered anything, naturally, I would have more to say. But I didn't, so I don't. Right, understood. Well, at least Byaki is being kinda nice. The bastard. Yep, next one is Taka. I spent some time looking around the dormitory and... There I made the discovery of the century! I found that there was exactly one room for each person! Well, yeah, I figured that out before anything else. Yeah. Each door already has a nameplate on it, so I guess all the rooms have already been assigned already. And each room key was attached to a keychain, with the owner's name, Precision, etched onto it. Which confirms that the room I was in earlier is, in fact, my room. And plus. And Chihiro and I found out that the rooms are totally soundproof. Your next-door neighbor could scream their lungs out, and you wouldn't hear a thing. <laughs> well, each room also had a private bathroom, which could also lock. Hmm. But it looked like there were only locks on the bathrooms in the girl dorms. Which, yeah, it, it contradicts us. Hey, come on. They got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're sure we're gonna be here a while. Quiet down and listen. Well, better to have than have not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. Th that can't be all you have to report, can it, M Mr. Honor Student? Got it. That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. Um, okay, so who's next? We yeah, them. we've seen these. Leon Hero, Junko, and Chihiro. We went all up and down the school, double-checking the windows and all the hallways and classes. We wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off. And what happened was... Hmm, nothing. Not a goddamn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge even a little bit. What should I do? Th there wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. This is bad. This sucks. Bad, 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 bad. It really sucks. It sucks, 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 sucks! What the hell are we gonna do? Hey, come on. Calm down. Calm down. You're starting to make me nervous. Next. Um, okay. We'll Same goes for Hina, Sakura, Mondo, Celeste, Togo, and Afumi. I think that's all of them. Hmm. We thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside. So we went looking all over. Sorry. But we didn't find anything. Sorry. Yo. I went back to the main hall thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk of metal. But even with Sakura and me both, it wouldn't budge. We hit it with desks and chairs and nothing. Shit. It was hard as, like, metal. Yes, indeed. Well, yes, it is metal. Oh, anyway, if we're gonna get out of here, it's not gonna be through there. I feel like I could just cry. But no, I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. So bad. I shall tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with communicating with the outside world, but it is still worth worrying about. One second, guys. Okay. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. But there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way to open them, so we couldn't check it out. In other words, at this point, we are only able to search the first floor. However, we can further assume that there is a potentially something above the second floor as well. And if that's the case, there is at least a chance it may lead to a way out. Alright, we just got one group left, I believe. You see. Alright. This is probably the most tedious moment of the entire fucking game. If I am being honest, I can't quite say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in the gym. Most unfortunate. Honestly, we are not exactly the types to go running around a school like a gaggle of junior detectives. What the hell's wrong with you? The hell were you thinking? Just sitting around the gym the whole time. <clears throat> well, it's not like any of you invited me along. Nobody said, hey, c c come with us. I blame you for leaving me out. It it's your fault. If you wanted to go with someone, you should just said something. <laughs> Forget it. Like I'd want to go anywhere with a, a d dirty slut like you. Huh? Huh? Slut? 
Your mind is as thin as your b body. You make me sick to my stomach. Are you for real? I... I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you just met? Hey, come on. Alright guys, everybody just calm down, okay? All this stress is bad for your skin, you know. Yeah, it sounds like you two are so close now, you're fighting like sisters. I don't think that's what's going on, Sayaka. Hey, um... So that's what they have to say, huh? Then I guess I'm the only one left. Alright. I went and had a look around the dining hall, I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen, and it was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. That's good. I guess we don't have to worry about food, at least. Oh. Uh... Sure, for now. But with all that, there are 15 of us. How long can the food last? <laughs> you can just eat sesame seeds or something. Huh? What am I, a parakeet? <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about it at all. The food gets restocked automatically each day. Um... At least that's what Monokuma said. Uh? You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge and told me that and then disappeared again. He was so fast. I can't believe someone could have been moving him around with a remote control. A weaponized toy that can just appear from nowhere? I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. But... Was everything okay? He didn't, like, try to eat you or anything. Huh? Eat her? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you say eat, what kind of eating are we talking about? Oh. Come on, man! Hey, you what the hell, fatty? You're acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Actually, not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Stop screwing around, all of ya! Are you all still asleep or something? We're prisoners here! We could all just die any second! She's right. We can't be making stupid jokes right now. We gotta do something, or... A voice cut through the noise. Oh, fuck, it's Monokuma. You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and carrying on! Hmm? Oh, it's Kyoko. Ha! Ha! Ha ha! I thought it was Monokuma. Oh, Kyoko, sorry. You just sounded like Monokuma for a second. Do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? Yo! Kyoko! Where the heck have you been? We already started the meeting without you. She didn't say a word. She dropped a piece of paper on the table. Oh, a map. What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? What the? Where did you find this? It doesn't matter where I found it. It does matter. You're really freaking us out right now. But more important. Never mind that. What's it mean? It would seem... Just look at it. The building we're in right now is laid out in precisely the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So what you're saying is, this really is Hope's Peak Academy? It's true. Well, in terms of its construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations? However... I don't know all the details yet. All I found was details about the first floor. Um... But then, this really is Hope's Peak? We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place? So stupid, it's not even possible. This is where the country's future elite are supposed to come and learn. But... But if this is really Hope's Peak, where are all the other students? <sighs> hey, come on guys. Let's just stop talking about all this, you know? Negative stuff. But aren't you worried? Things don't look good. Yo. Worried? What's there to be worried about? I mean, this was all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope's Peak put this all together, right? <laughs> Man, if I got stressed every time something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm shooting out my mouth. You know? Good thing comes to those who wait, right? So we just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. <laughs> What's your problem? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I am just happy. That is all. It seems fitting up to investigate was a good idea after all. <sighs> Haven't you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time. We d didn't find any way out. We didn't find out who's behind this. We still have no idea what's g g g going on. Oh. Huh? Is it not crystal clear to you what's going on? Are you okay with this? It is perfectly obvious that we have been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. Yeah. Who didn't figure that one out? Everyone's thick, basically. Yeah, it's the reality. You didn't have to go and say that. I was trying not to think about it. No way out? But you trapped in? What are we supposed to do? 
It's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Stop it. Don't even joke about that. Um... Everyone, just calm down, please. We need to stop and think about what to do from here. Seems like... There's gotta be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Adapt to living our lives here from now on. That's... Live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? Do you understand? A lack of adaptability is a lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is the strongest or the smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. Actually... As someone who has come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? Huh? Hmm. We all understand that we are trapped here, which means we will be spending a lot of time at night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Do not flashback me. Do not. F I don't need a flashback, guys. Let's see. So, regarding this nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? Going out at night time should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night. I would like to make it official. Hmm? But, but why? Are you okay with this? The way things are now, every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. We will be afraid someone might try to come and kill us. Huh? What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity at night as a kind of preventative measure. Indeed. However, unlike the other rules, nobody can be forced to comply. We all have to agree to follow it. What can we do? I see what you mean, but I think I can agree to that. It's like the little goth leader said. Without something like that, we're just gonna self-destruct. Listen to me! On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply. What? Hey, you can't just decide to speak for us. This is fine. So everyone is in agreement? Good. <laughs> then if you will excuse me. Huh? Huh? Wait, where are you going? Let's see. It is almost night time. I want to take a shower before it. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was seven o'clock. It was seven o'clock when we got here. Now it's somehow ten o'clock. And can we point out that it is night time, as it says up there, so you can't have a shower, Celeste. I hope you are well. Goodbye. Moving with her elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Her behavior seems so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone even trying to stop her. Um, so I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We'll be spending the night, it looks like. Hmm. Adaptability. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, what's next? One person already left. Um. Well then, let's say we call an end to today's meeting. You understand? Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Huh? Do we really have to stay the night here? What can we do? We don't have a choice. We can't go for long without getting some sleep. <sighs> so we this have to just sucks. give up. <sighs> That's all fine and good for t today, but what do we do tomorrow? So in the end... Our only option is to split up and look around again and let everyone know if we find anything. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Aww. Then we're done for today? Good. I'm exhausted. With heavy movements, everyone headed off to their private rooms. Um. Makoto, are you ready to call it a day? Yeah, let's go. Damn. This is pretty intense so far. Is this really where I'll be staying for the seeable future? Oh yeah, check the bathroom door. This is a fun thing. It's going to introduce something very important. Alright, let's open it up. It doesn't open. It really is locked. Bzzz. Bzzz. Wrong. Not locked. Holy crap. Jeez. Talk about an overreaction. It's like you just saw a ghost or something. Like some kind of robot bear ghost. What are you doing here? What? Makoto Nayagi. This is the super duper majorly bad. So bad it's almost magical. Ultra magical awful awful attack. Uh -huh. In point of fact, I acknowledge that the bathroom in your room has a problem with the door frame. Wait, so the reason it won't open is because the door just doesn't fit? Hey, um... Didn't you see the notice? What, can't you read? The bathrooms in the boys' rooms don't have locks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lock on a boys' bathroom is kind of pointless, don't you think? Ba -bum, ba -bum. Well, it's not that it's pointless, but I guess I'm no expert on the birds and the bees and all that. Listen up. Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this particular ill-fitting door. And that's what I'm here to teach you. Okay, ready. So you just turn the doorknob, then lift up while you pull. Yes, indeed. Go ahead, give it a try. 
Okay. And the door opened. <laughs> See? It opened right up. Isn't that crazy, though? Your door is the only one that doesn't seem to fit quite right. You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But looks like you're not lucky at all. Bye-bye! Anyway, I suddenly don't feel like being here anymore. Bye! Hey, wait! Damn it. Bong, bong. Oh, Christ. Hi, Monokuma. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. Nice. As such... It is officially night time. No. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Bye, Monokuma. Looks like it's night time. We all promised we wouldn't leave our rooms now. All I can do now is try and get some sleep. While still mumbling to myself, I collapsed into bed. My eyes closed almost immediately. It's not that I was ready for bed exactly, I was just utterly exhausted. It was as if I'd spent an entire day staring at a TV watching movies. Or like some kind of illusion where I'd been tossed into a made-up fantastical world. Yeah, that feels about right, pretty much. <laughs> it is a game. And so we sleep. So this is how the curtain closed on my first day at Hope's Peak Academy. Sure enough, I was asleep. Would it be too much to hope that when I woke up, I'd realize it was all a dream? It's kind of lame as far as endings go, but I'd be fine with that. Actually, that'd be the best. Monokuma Theater. This, I just don't listen to. We can skip this. It's fine. We can skip this. It literally... Literally, Monokuma Theater is the most useless thing on this goddamn game. Everyone skips it. No one likes it. Oh, it's his morning announcement, right? I remember. He does this every morning and every evening. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Good god, I hate that guy. It's morning, but yeah, no way to know for sure. What should I do now? I should go find Sayak and we can figure out where to go from here together. She did say she's my assistant now. It's decided. I'm gonna head to her room. <laughs> oh, that's Kiyotaka. Hey. Good morning, Makoto. Good morning? <laughs> morning greetings are quite a delight. Such an energizing way to start the day. You understand? Okay, let's do our very best. Okay. Yeah, he's always like this, apparently. Alright. Oh! That helps. There's a doorbell, so let's ring it. Hello? Good morning, Saika. Hi, Makoto. Oh, Makoto, perfect timing. Huh? Um, listen, listen, I have a favor to ask. A favor? I was just getting ready to head out. If it's okay, would you like to come with me? Maybe we could talk. Yeah, sure, where are you headed? Uh, uh, oh, um, I've been thinking about... There might be something around here I could use for self-defense. Self-defense? Well, I mean, whoever's keeping us here could just show up and attack us at any time, right? You never know. Whoever trapped us here? Whoever presented us with the rules for murdering each other? Whoever put us in this insane position? She's right, we never know when they might attack. Um... So I just want to be able to protect myself no matter what happens. A weapon to protect herself. Well, now that I think about it, that display case in the gym entryway had a bunch of stuff, maybe. <laughs> oh, the gym? Okay, let's go. Again? Like I said, I'm psychic. I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Am I really so easy to predict? Anyway, we should head to the gym. Uh, yeah, we have fast travel now. Okay. Well, oh, hi. Okay. Well, one second. We're not going to end the episode yet. We're going to fast travel, but before we do that... I just want to go to the options. I want to turn the SFX down a bit. Simply because it's really tough to hear the voices sometimes. Let's see if that's saved. Yes, it did. Good. And then let's go to the map. And then... There we go. That was a quick fast travel. 
We're here. Let's get the sword. Is this a sword? Oh no, I think it's just a replica. Still, it's pretty impressive. It's completely covered in a gold coating. But, jeez, I barely touched it and I got that gold stuff all over my hands. Uh, um... Wow, you're right. Your hands are totally gold. Even just for self-defense, I think it's a little... Well, it's still better than nothing, I guess. Hey, um... You should take it with you. It might help liven up your room a little. You think so? <laughs> but I guess you better be careful taking it back. You should wrap it in newspaper or something. And just like that, it's been decided. I don't see anything I could really use for self-defense. Hey, don't worry about it. It's not like you'll need it right away, right? Plus, if anything were to happen, when the time comes, I'll protect you. Huh? You'll protect me? <laughs> Thank you for saying that, sexual tension. If I've got you on my side, I guess I don't need a weapon after all. Psychic like giggles. she said that. A mysterious smile. I can tell it comes from the heart. It makes me feel at ease. When I look at her, I honestly feel like I can do anything. <laughs> okay, we can stop looking for a weapon then. But as long as they're here, let's hang out a bit more. So let's chat with Sayaka for a bit. Because obviously this is plot points. Um, um, I know I said I wanted to talk to you, but now that we're here, I don't really know what to talk about. Sorry. And I was the one who invited you to come with me too. Sorry. It's okay. I mean, if there's nothing to talk about, then we can just not talk, right? Huh? huh? You don't have to force yourself to talk. We can just, I don't know, stare off into space or whatever. Stare off into space. Oh, but you're probably super bored just standing around doing nothing. Uh, um, no, it's not that it's boring, it's just... I... I've never really done it before. I don't have a lot of time to just do nothing. I guess that makes sense. You're not a normal high school student like me. You've got tons of stuff to do every day. Um, hey, this is kind of out of nowhere, but... Makoto, do you have a dream? Let's find out. What about you, Sayaka? What's your dream? I'd love to hear. I... I... My dream is... I've always wanted to be a star. As long as I can remember. I grew up without a mother, you know? And my dad worked really late every night. I was always home alone. I was just a kid, you know? So I was really lonely. But that all changed when I saw a pop star on TV for the first time. She was so pretty. Like a princess. And she could sing and dance. <laughs> But more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking at her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. <laughs> Eventually, that became my dream. That's so amazing, though. You were able to fulfill your lifelong dream. Honestly, it's really incredible. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean, it... Even some things that weren't so pleasant. Huh? You see. I honestly believe that as long as you kept chasing your dreams, someday they had to come true. But to do that, you can't take your eyes off the dream. Not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream. Whether you're awake, whether you're asleep. To make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on it no matter what. Um... In that world, if you lose focus for even a split second, you get left behind. You have to keep on swimming against the current without even taking time to breathe. That's the kind of world my dream lives in. Is it really that tough? Is it not fun at all? Oh no! Don't get the wrong idea, it's super fun! But... That's exactly why it scares me. Huh? Uh, um... I enjoy every single day I wake up and get to do what I do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but they all mean so much to me. We've been performing together since we were young, so they're all like family to me. Without them... I would have given up on my dream a long time ago. To work together and fulfill our dreams together has brought me so much happiness. But that's why... The thing that scares me the most. If the world gets tired of us, then what happens? What happens to us? Then the dream dies. Those wonderful days come to an end and everyone goes their separate ways. Sayaka. She's trembling. She must be terrified. She worked so hard, sacrificed so much to get where she is. She must be terrified of losing it. You see. So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. What do you mean? Uh, um. They say if you graduate from here, success is basically guaranteed. Which means I could keep on performing with my best friends forever and ever. At least that's what I thought. I really did believe that, but... Now we're trapped in here with no way out. 
They're probably waiting for me. While I'm here, the world out there is forgetting about me. Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still... Sayaka... I can't afford to be stuck in here! That was the first time I heard her cry out from deep within herself. She sounds desperate, but I can understand why she'd feel that way. Trapped here this way, the dream she put so much effort into is on the verge of disappearing forever. And that isn't something that can be fixed with a few kind words. The weight she's carrying, I can't even imagine it. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to complain. Uh, um... I kind of killed the mood, huh? No, not at all. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Sayaka? Actually, are you hungry? Before we head back, why don't we go to the dining hall and get some food? So, so... Okay. You want me to make us something to eat? I might not look like it, but I'm actually a pretty good cook. Wow, really? What's your speciality? Chili oil. You mean the condiment? <laughs> Just kidding. She burst out laughing. Her earlier mood disappeared, replaced by the bright smile I'd quickly grown used to. But how'd it happen so fast? It was almost like a mask, some kind of neutral expression. Damn. That was intense. Headed to the dining hall, and then returned to our rooms. Oh my god, that was an intense moment. Oh wow. The only thing in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. <laughs> All it does is make me feel that much more uncomfortable. Anyway, there's still plenty of time left in the day. I really don't feel like just sitting here. Maybe I'll take a look around. And we're about to have free time. Uh, would you like to hear more? No. Free time, you can basically talk with people and have fun. But we're going to be doing that in the next episode, guys. So, thank you so much for watching this episode of Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Havoc. If you've enjoyed this series so far, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe in the next episode. No spoilers, but we are going to reach the first murder. So I'll see you then.